What's up YouTube? For today's video, we have a full Typeless Pokemon team. Now, Typeless is such an interesting kind of type to have a look at. It is very, very unique to all the other Pokemon types. In this video, I'll showcase some battles and also explain not only what Typeless is, but some cool strategies based around it too. And maybe you'll learn something new. All right, the question for today is, what is your least favorite Pokemon type? Leave below in the comment section of the video, and I want to know why too. Give me some salt. All right, people, if you haven't actually followed me on Twitch, even make sure you do there because I'm doing all my streams. You don't want to miss that. I'm also doing some non-Pokemon stuff too for anyone uh, there. Uh, links in the description, check them out. And thank you to all the members on the channel. If you want to become a member, hit that join button. Right, people, I actually spent a super long, long, long amount of time. I've been working on this video for weeks and weeks. So if you could smack that like button, people, I'd very much appreciate it. If, you, if you're on the fence about it, I'm going to give you a reason to, all right? These battles were hype. So I've got a single battle today and I've got a double battle right afterwards. So I've got two different kinds of battles. You guys send me that message saying, you know, you do want to see double battles. I hear you people loud and clear. So I'm going to include that in today's video. So uh, we got a Celesteel Elite and I've got a Deoxys Elite. Didn't want to kind of stay into a heavy slam unless it was from a Waylord. So I swapped into my Typhlosion, right? So this Typhlosion set is running... Um, a fairly interesting strategy. So as you guys know, if you've heard of the move Burn Up before, Burn Up is a fire type move with 130 base power, right? And when you use it, you actually become typeless. However, you can only become typeless if you are a fire type. And when I mean fire type, I mean only fire type, not fire and flying, fire and water, fire and whatever, right? So you have to be solo fire type. Now, after using Burn Up as a fire type, you cannot use it again. So you can only use it once, and that is it. If, unless you want to swap out later on, right? So obviously there's things like that. So this strategy, I was basically putting Typhlosion down into Blaze range with Substitute. I've got the item Patea Berry to boost my special attack in a pinch. In a pinch, people. Pinch and a punch for the first... That's not the first day of the month. Never mind. And I've got Substitute, obviously, to get my health down. Now, I've also got Endure on this set. Um, say I was thinking, you know, they didn't have a super effective move and I wanted to get down to blaze range, I would use that. The other move I got, of course, is flamethrower as well. But when you come typeless right, you obviously, you hit neutral against everything. So you don't have any super effectives, but you don't have any weaknesses. So it's sort of like a really weird type that has no weaknesses, but no super effective. And it can go through anything. It can go for like Wonder Guard, loads of things like that. Also, if you've got any questions about typeless, please leave it below in the comment section. If you see you can answer a question in the comment section, people, you know, help a brother out. All right, so we've got a pincer coming in here, getting rid of that Celestealer with that, uh, that was a plus one max health, uh, sorry, max special attack, max speed, Typhlosion, Tib in nature. That Scylla Stealer, man, that got inferno So we got a uh, Mega Pits here, never saw that one coming. It's going to go for the Quick Attack and finish off my Typhlosion. Now, I did a really ballsy move here. I went into the Oxys, right? I was like, okay, I'm going to make them think, right, I've got a Focus Act. Because I know they've got Quick Attack, they've shown me that. So I, I went for a really gutsy move here. I actually got a swap on a Mega Pits. I was like, yes, this is, this is hype, people. And Greninja actually comes in. So they obviously think I'm going to go for like a Psychic type move. But today, I'm running... Assault Fest struggle, people. Now, people, with uh, Deoxy's attack, it's got a very high attack stat, right? So I decided to attach Assault Fest to it. And obviously, struggle is a typeless attack, right? And I too hit the Greninja. I actually took something out with struggle. Woo! So uh, we took the Greninja out with struggle. That was hype, people. I'm so glad you got to see that. And uh, obviously, the move I had, I just gave it, uh, I think I gave it Toxic. I just gave it Toxic. So with Assault Fest, right, if you give them a uh, status type move, and obviously, Assault Fest actually will not allow you to use any status type moves, it will automatically make you use struggle. So that's how I got it to use struggle. So we've got, we've covered burn up and now we've covered struggle. So there's another interesting move you may have actually forgotten about, which is bite. Now bite is a very interesting move, right? Bite is a normal type move, normally, pun the pun. However, in the damage process of unleash energy, it is actually typeless. So it can hit stuff like ghosts, Rock, steel, neutral, right? So it's 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 neutral in its damage. So I thought it actually would be a nice little inclusion for the team. So we got the uh, Mega Pizza going for the quick take. Even with the sword dance there, it's not going to be able to get past the big Moo Moo. And I'm going for the Unleash Energy, just burying that Mega Pizza. Man, things are going awesome. Now, I will say this team had a lot of fails, people. It was not the greatest team in the world. It was more of like an, a, an experiment and a meme. All right, so we got Blissey coming out here. We're going to go for the block there, play a little bit of high five. Now, I really can't do a lot to Blissey at all. I do have on this Mill Tank set. Let me, let me tell you what the set was. So I've got Bide, Milk Drink, Block, and Heal Bell. 
uh, we got Max Health, Max Defense, Thick Fat Ability, and Normal MZ. So I'm going to go for Normal MZ Bide. That's pretty much all I can actually do to Blissey because, it, I mean, real like real talk. I'm gonna, what am I going to do? Go for Bide on the Seismic Toss. I'm going to go down, right? So I thought the best, uh, you know, kind of uh, thing to do here would be go for Breakneck Blitz. Now, I don't have any attack EVs, but Blissey's defense isn't, you know, it's not the greatest in the world. So I actually hit it, like, pretty hard. So I was quite impressed with the damage there. Um, it, I mean, it's probably definitely got softballed, so I just wanted to do like, the best job I could. All right, so anyway, we've got uh, Miltank's going to meet Ar and, like, Neil Armstrong for about one second, and then it's going to faint. So we've still got three Pokemon to go, but it's it's going, like, really, really well. We've taken out a Celesteela, we've taken Greninja out with Struggle, and uh, we've taken, uh, you know, Mega Pinsir out with Bide. So that, that's, that's a really cool strategy to have. All right, people, so we had to include Smeagol uh, in this team. Let's go over what this Smeagol set is. This Smeagol set was a little bit... Uh, uh, similar to my Typhlosion one. However, we're going to go for a special sweeping set. On this Smeagol, we've got Burn Up, Conversion, Tail Glow, and Spore. So what we're going to do against the Blissey, we're going to try and take Blissey out with a special attacking Smeagol. Never mind, guys. All right, so I'm going to go for Tail Glow, which is going to boost my special attack, um, like, three stages. Then the other Tail Glow is going to boost it the rest, and we're going to be at max, right? So then I can go for Conversion. Conversion will turn me into a, uh, a Fire type, which will make Smeagol pure Fire type. Uh, it will get rid of its, you know, normal type. So as I stress, to use Burn Up uh, to get that type, you must be a pure fire type, right? And obviously, Conversion does the job of doing that. Now, also, an interesting thing about Conversion, if you want to conver use Conversion on a move, right, the move actually has to be the first move, like, move slot in your um, Pokemon. So my first move on Smeagol, right, is the Burn Up. I've also got Spore on this set, too, if I needed to set up against a Pokemon. In this situation, I could only go for Tail Glow and Conversion. I didn't really want to risk a Spore because it could wake up. So I'm going to go for my Burn Up. Look at that damage to Blissey. You, you, you guys have got to give it to me for that one. That was some pretty impressive damage. And uh, now Blissey is going to Seismic Toss my Smeagol, and it's going to go down. Now, you're probably wondering why I did that for, but I need to get a little bit more damage on Blissey. Not that it was, like, probably really that much, but it was, it was needed, all right? So the next Pokemon we're going to send in is Katana. Now, Katana has a big, big, big thumping attack stat. And that is why I'm going to be using Assault Vest Struggle on this one, too. We're going to go Assault Vest Struggle Beast Boost. Look at that, Koyo. Blissey's down. We're going to get a Beast Boost, Beast Boost Struggle, guys. This is this is the content you subscribe. If you haven't if you haven't liked if you haven't liked this video, guys, there, there's you just have to like it right now for that. All right, we got two more Pokemon left. We got Kyra and Black Ears. It's like, okay, this thing is actually really bulky, very, very bulky. I was like, the only thing I can really do is just go for Struggle. It's not like I'm going to swap out with a plus one Beast Boost. It does very, very minimal damage. Now, Struggle itself is a 50 base power move. It's also typeless as well. So it's neutral to everything. It's not super effective. It also can go through anything like Wonder Guard too. Okay, we got Corrin Black going for a Z move there. And I don't think any Z, like any Z move in the world, like, okay, Sub-Zero Slammer. That, guys, that's definitely coming off Powder Snow, right? So it's going to be coming off like Ice Beam or something along those lines. And my Katana is going to go down. So even, guys, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Why did, why did it not live? That Assault Vest should have made it live. Okay, so Katana goes down there. I really like Katana's uh, fading animation. It's cool. It's like the little piece of paper just flying down. Right, so the last point we got is the Arcanine. And this Arcanine was a bulky strategy. So... Uh, let's go over that one. We've got Burn Up on this one. we got Morning Sun, Fire Spin, and Toxic. All right, so going for Burn Up, not playing any games whatsoever. I'm already a pure fighting type, so I can make use of Burn Up. Now I am typeless, right? And so I can't use Burn Up once again. Now, that was actually very important. If you notice there, Kyron Black used Earth Power, right? Now, if you notice, it was neutral, right? It wasn't super effective. So I actually saved myself from actually taking a very big hit. So, the Fire Spin misses, and now we've got the Kyron back going for the Free Shock. Now, Free Shock takes two turns to power up, so I'm assuming that's what the z moves are coming from. Otherwise, you'd normally run it with, like, I'd say, like, Power Herb or something like that. Anyway, so I, I missed the uh, fire, uh, fire Spin, and Fire Spin misses again, and the Free Shock misses! What? Oh, my goodness. So, that actually would have done some thumping damage to uh, the Arcanine. Uh, this Arcanine was max health and max speed, if I didn't say the EVs already. So, finally, Fire Spin actually lands on the mark. It doesn't do a lot of damage. However, it does have that uh, fixed amount of damage at the end of turn. Kyrim is going to go for another gutsy... Um, uh, freezing move there. I was at Shock Freeze, and uh, it's going to go down to the Fire Spin next there. Man, that was awesome. However, people, the battle is not over. We still have one more Pokemon to get rid of, and we've got this uh, We've got this bulky Arcanine and see if we can do the job. So, right, we've got the Clefable coming out. Now, this Clefable was the biggest pain in the bottom that you could ever imagine. So, the thing I was actually asking myself was, one, does this have Magic Guard, or does it have Unaware? If it's got Magic Guard, we are... Uh, we're up Poop Creek, people. We cannot do anything. 
we can only go for a fire spin. And I can only assume this has like wish or softball. So there's no way I'm going to be able to take it out. So first thing we're going to go for the toxic. It went for protect that turn, which is interesting. Um, they've actually already seen pretty much all my moves, right? So except toxic, I guess. All right. So they're going to go for heal bell. So like, okay, heal bell. Why would you run heal bell on there? You, if it's a magic guard set, it probably wouldn't have heal bell. I mean, it's obviously it's very helpful for the rest of the team, right? But you know, my, my spidey senses were starting to tingle a little bit. I was like, maybe it's got unaware, you know, this could be good. We could get a battle going here, people. We could win with this amazingly crappy, fun team. All right, so anyway, we've got the uh, Clefable going for the Moonblast there. Moonblast does pretty good damage to me, considering. And obviously, I'm typed as well. If you notice, that wasn't not very effective. It was, you know, it did neutral damage to me. So the item I've got in this is Leftovers 2, if you didn't already realize that by looking at the screen. And now, now I'm going to go for the Fire Spin. Fire Spin misses again. And uh, Clefable 6 is going to continue to spam uh, the Moonblast at me. So this was probably the longest part in the game. Also, during this bit, I'm going to explain a couple of uh, uh, typeless mechanics too. So uh, the Arcanine had Morning Sun as its healing move too. So I, I kind of wanted to fit Sunny Day into this set because that would really stack nicely with Morning Sun giving me some more recover. But I couldn't fit in. I was sort of like four like slot move syndrome. Uh, five, sorry, five slot. You can have four on a Pokemon. Anyway, uh, so that was the thing. I wanted to get Sunny down there, but I couldn't. So Clefable, right, is just spamming me with these um, these moon blasts, right? The, the, what I need to do is get that Toxie up and get that, uh, you know, that fire spin happening. And, you know, the Clefable would be gone in five turns. Like, it takes six turns to take a Pokemon up Toxic, but they don't heal. So fire spin, you know, we'll put that down to five. So things are going pretty swimmingly at the moment. Uh, we got that, but the problem is, right, it's got Heal Bell. So I was thinking to myself, okay, so Heal Bell, I know it max with, it's the same as aroma, Aromatherapy, right? It's got 8 PP, right? So Toxic itself has got a lot more than that. So all I've got to do is burn up their Heal, their heal Bells, right? And then my strategy is good. The only thing I've got to worry about is Critical Wits from Moonblast. And if I don't, you know, use Morning Sun correctly at the, uh, you know, the right time and then I get critted, uh... That's pretty much it. I was quite confident I could beat this Clefable. It obviously was trying to storm me out very hard. I mean, the, they must be salty, right? I've, I've taken... A, I've taken... Actually, I think I took out... I took out two of their Pokemon with Struggle. I, I took out one, one of them with Unleashed Energy. I, I had the audacity to use a Burn-Up Smeagle against them. And, and yeah, that, that, I mean, I'd be salty too. They must be laughing their ass off. Anyway, so um, this team, right? This is a pretty... Like, real talk, guys. This was actually a very good team that I was versing. It wasn't like... No, they, what, they weren't a mug, right? They were going for it with these powerful Pokemon sets. And, you know, they were definitely standard mods. So it's going to have softball. Of course it does. I was like, oh, I was kind of wishing it had wish, but uh, it's got softball. I didn't even mean to do that, pump. Why does that always happen? So let's, uh, I just wanted to explain, like, uh, typeless, right? So I'm not sure if you noticed, right? When you're playing your game back in the day, right? You might have noticed the move curse, right? And then you notice, oh, the typing of the move curse. It's got three little question marks on it. And it's got like a... Uh, uh, Aquary bluey background. I put it on the thumbnail of this video. So that was actually a typeless move, uh, you know, a while back, right? But obviously now it's a ghost type move. Now the reason for it being a typeless move, I think, was because it had a different effect on ghost type Pokemon and normal type Pokemon. Like a ghost type Pokemon, it would half your health and put a curse on the opponent. But say you used it on something like Mil Tank, it would boost your defense, you know, and attack one stage and drop your speed, right? So it's a different kind of mechanic, and that, so that's why. Uh, you know, I had that typing all the way back then. Then I sort of adjusted that later on. But just something interesting to know too. But yeah, there's not too much to do with typeless. There's only a very few, uh, like, small amount of things. I've tried to cover them as best as I can in this video too. So, like, burn up once again. With burn up, make sure you are a fighter. I've seen other videos and stuff. I've tried strategy. You know, you can do, like, Wonder Guard. Uh, like, you know, Wonder Guard Pokemon skill swapping, things like that, making them invincible. I thought I'd do something a little bit different today, and I've got a cool strategy coming up too in the double battle very soon. Um, but I want to do something different to that, right? So we, everyone's, everyone kind of knows about that one. We've all done that a million times. So we got the uh, Toxic and the Fire Speed up against the Clefable. Basically, this Clefable had... I, th I was thinking, if it even's got like max amount, I'm good. I did get critted like a couple of times by the uh, Moonblast. It, it lowered my special attack, but it didn't really matter too much because Fire Spin was only there to do like trapping damage at the end, right? Right, uh, so Clefable is being a general pain in the ass. They are really, really holding on here. They really want to storm me out. Like, they're, they're desperate to win. Like, it, they, normally guys are pretty, like, cruisy with battles. I don't really care if I win or lose. But in this stage of the battle, I was actually, I was getting pretty, like, I was getting into it. Like, I hadn't felt that for a while. But I was really, I really wanted to win this battle. Usually, I don't actually care a lot of the income. But, um, but I was, like, thinking, you know, 
I gotta win this battle, guys. I gotta, I gotta take this uh, Clefable out for the memes. Like, if I could win a battle this team, it would be absolutely awesome. Anyway, we won't say anything just yet because we all know what happens. So, uh, we got the Clefable there. I'm gonna go for another Toxic. It just healed off its uh, Toxic with a Aromatherapy. Heal Bell, not Aromatherapy. They're basically the same thing anyway. So, uh, its little bell is going to be chiming very, very soon. It's going to go for the soft boiled. Now, soft boiled, I had Morning Sun, so I knew that I could match it soft boiled. I knew that I could outstall it with the toxic. I had, um, it, it, even if a critical hit me, it had to crit like me almost twice in a row to actually take me out. Uh, even with max health, the bulky Arcanine isn't really that bulky, right? It's more on the defensive side because you've got the Intimidate ability, right? It works very well against physical Pokemon. You send them out, get the Intimidate drop, you've got max health. Mostly, you can get a swap, or they just hit you with like a weak physical hit. All right, so we got the, another heal bell. I think that's the fifth heal bell now, or fourth or fifth heal bell. This thing, they, they were trying to use heal bell like very, very sparingly too. Like when they're getting low on health, when toxic start to rack up for a lot of damage, right? That's when they use it, and then they use softball right away, which is how I do it anyway. But if I had the clefable, that's exactly what I do. That's just like doing. That's just my puppy. She's like got a collar on. This. She's like shaking really loudly in the background while I'm narrating. It's it's fun times, people. YouTube life. Anyway, so we're gonna hit by another moon there. It does a thumping critical hit to me, so it is definitely a clear two hit KO even after leftover recovery. Um, if you know the Clefable crits me twice in a row, so that's what I was really worried about. And I didn't like this Arcanine. Right, it had no real physical presence about it. Uh, even the first work, uh, the first burnout really isn't that powerful because I'm running, investing everything in our uh, health and uh, speed. So go for another Morning Sun. I'm really forced to it, but if I get critted, um, I'm a goner. So obviously they knew that I was going to go for a Morning Sun and they're going to go for another softballed once again. Man, this this was salty. So I think they've used Heal Bell five times now on the count. So five is a minimum, can get eight is the max run. So go for another fire spin here on the Clefable. Like, honestly, if they in this matchup, they didn't even need to do this, Dolly, because I have got more PP than their Clefable. Like, when you look at, like, the moves, right? I've got more healing capacity. I, they don't even have Toxic, right? So, you know, eventually their heal bells are going to run out. All right, so we're getting some more Toxic damage. I'm actually, at this point, I was like, okay, I, I think they've run out of heal bells. I'm very, very certain they have. They're actually starting to, like, really attack me. Uh, Fire Spin is going to miss. They're, they've obviously run out of heal bells now because they're spamming Moon Blast. They're not worrying about healing their Toxic off. Or they've just figured out, well, you know, I can't win this matchup. The only way really to win this matchup, right, is to go for a Moonblast critical hit on the Arcanine. But as I said before, they'll need two in a row, right? Anyway, so Clefable is on its last legs, people. And finally, finally, I can take this god dang thing out. Going for a final Morning Sun there. I cannot withstand another critical hit. Fire Spin will not actually take them out at this point in the game. Even if they crit me now, I'm fine. Clefable is going to go down. And that, my friends, is the game. Woo! I can't believe we won that first battle. And that was against a good team too. Like, that was not, that team was no joke. Like, that was like real talk. Like, all memes aside. Like, you know, there, there, there was no like physical jinxes or, you know, stuff like that on that team. That was a hard team to beat. All right, people. As promised, here is a doubles battle for you. If you enjoyed this video so far, people, make sure you give that like button a little hit. And uh, let's keep going. I've got a really good battle here and a very, very interesting uh, strategy uh, for you people. All right, so I actually made two separate teams for this. I mixed my uh, this team into my first one. So there's a couple of new players. Let's go over who they are. So we've got Kecleon. Now, Kecleon is a pretty interesting Pokemon. I'm going to be doing a very uh, interesting strategy with Ho-Oh in this one. So as you guys know, right, Ho-Oh is fire and flying. So if I, obviously, if the Ho-Oh used burn up straight away, it wouldn't get that typeless boost because it's not a solo flying, fire type. So we're going to get rid of its flying type and make it a solo fire type. Okay, so first thing we're going to leave with the Arcanine. We're going to get the Intimidate off, and that's going to be really good for the Incineroar. Obviously, it went for Earthquake on this turn. Now, obviously, Smiggle's going to go for the Spiky uh, spiky Shield that's going to get blocked. Ho I was just lucky that it used Earthquake. I didn't predict them using Earthquake or anything. I'm not going to, you know, BS to you and say that. I didn't know that I was going to use that. I thought they may use Fake Out or something. Now, I'm going to get my uh, Kecleon uh, color change into a Grout type, which is, you know, either here or there. Now, we're going to go for Skill Swap on the Kecleon with the Ho-Oh. So, me using skill swap on the Ho-Oh, right, is given a color change. Now, color change works basically whenever you get hit by a move, it uh, will change you to that type. So, you might be able to see where I'm going. However, you might not. Keep watching. So, we've got the uh, Smiggle going for the Toxic on my Kecleon. Now, Kecleon actually has a Lumberry as its item. Uh, just in case, I did get poisoned, so we got a Lumberry on the Kecleon. Now, the Kecleon is max health and max uh, special defense. It's a very, very bulky special defense set. So, we got the Carmine on the Ho-Oh here. Now, this Ho-Oh set is a meme, right? That's why I want to run this. 
on a, you know, a powerful Pokemon like Ho-Oh. It has to be a meme on my channel, right? Has to be a meme. Also, it was fire and flying too. So we got the, the Kecleon going for an Iron Tail, turning Ho-Oh into a Steel type, so I can't get poisoned. How clever is that, people? You know, guys, I come up with these strategies. Someone's, you know, you guys, you guys better use some of these strategies someday. You've got to use them. All right, so we're going to go for another Carmine here, boosting my special attack and special defense. Also, on the Ho-Ho, I'm running max health and max defense, right? So it's very, very bulky. Now, um, I'm now a Steel type, so I can't use Burn Up. I can't make use of Burn Up yet, but I can very, very soon. So now we've got the Azumarill going for a Normalium Z. As soon as I see Normalium Z, right, okay, this is going to use probably like Z Belly Drum. Now, I probably expected me to attack them with a the Ho-Oh, so that was actually a pretty good play there. They've got plus six. That's that's a big threat. I've got to get rid of that straight away. I cannot set the rest of my strategy up. Now, Kekon's going to go for the Flamethrower, turning me back into a Fire type, but this time, I'm not Fire and Flying. I'm just Fire. Now, you can see where I'm going with this, right? So a pretty cool strategy with the uh, Kecleon. Now we've got the uh, Smeagol swapping out and we've got the Incineroar coming back in here. So uh, Kecleon is pretty much useless now. All i got to do is just go for one more skill swap to uh, give its original ability back. Obviously, obviously it's done its job with the color change. Ho -Oh's, I don't want Ho like Ho-Oh's type actually changing back to something else. Is then it won't be able to make use of Burnout right. Alright, so speaking of uh, burning up things, I'm going to go for the Giga Drain on the Azumarill. And uh, that is going to get body. I'd say it's probably going to go for something like Liquidation. Alright, so go for another skill swap on the ho ho here. That's going to swap our uh, abilities around. ho ho is going to get its pressure back, right? And I'm going to obviously get my ability back. Now that's cool. ho ho is all set up. Kecleon, it doesn't matter. Kecleon is completely useless now. It's done its job. Uh, it's real only job with us on this team. It wasn't actually meant to be using any typist moves itself. It was just help, you know, helping out to the Ho Ho to get typist. All right, so we got the Tapu Fini once again. Not a not these guys. Like these teams weren't playing games, guys. These were decent teams. All right, so we have the Incineroar going for the uh, Flame Charge, and uh, Kecleon is going to get one shot of this. So. Nothing I can do there. That was a very powerful attack. There was no Intimidate on the field either. And uh, now I'm going to go for the uh, Calm Mind here. Let me go for what they set to her as well. You guys didn't know. So the Akeklon, we had Skill Swap, Iron Tail, Flamethrower, and Recover. Um, once again, I changed the color type with Skill Swap. I then turned the Ho-Oh into a Steel type. I then changed it back into a Fire type using Flamethrower. And then I swapped the skills around and uh, made it a permanent fire type now also a fun fact with roost you can change get rid of that typing uh flying typing on ho ho however it's only for that turn so it's not permanent so i want to make like a permanent way for ho ho you know to have that uh typing all right so we got deoxys coming here i'm just going to go for the assault vest struggle and uh incineroar is just going to incinerate my deoxys taking it out now the good thing about that is incineroar actually took some recoil damage which was good too so Giga Drain is not going to be very, very effective against the uh, Incineroar too. All right, so finally going for the burn up, taking out the Incineroar, burning myself out. And now, Ho-Oh is a pure typeless Pokemon with Roost, with Calm Mind, with Giga Drain. So it's it's a pretty it's a pretty good thing. And uh, obviously it's got Calm Mind too. So the really only weakness of this Ho-Oh set now is it can be critted or it can be shut down with something like Toxic, right? Even if I got torn at the moment, I could still use Giga Drain, right? And it's very, very bulky. All right, however, I did have some, obviously, I had some uh, little counters to Toxic type Pokemon. So uh, we got the Tapu Fini coming out, which are actually pretty good because I couldn't get status at all. It kind of wrecked some of my strategy, unfortunately, but we'll see how that goes. Right, so we got the... Uh, we got the Mega Giga coming out. It's going to go for the Shadow Ball. Now, this is a special, obviously, a special attacking Pokemon. It doesn't even phase my Ho Ho. However, it gets a special defense drop. Katana's going to go for a struggle, and it's going to hit Tapu Fini instead. I kind of wish it hit, like, Mega Gengar. That would have been really handy because Giga Drain right is going to need plus six in special attack to even remotely do any damage to Gengar. I'm estimating at a plus six would be about a two to three hit KO on Gengar due to it's all of its, like, type resistances. That sort of thing. All right, so we got a Moonblast on the Katana. Katana really only lives there due to the Assault Vest. Asta's like being really loud in the background. Stop it, Asta. I'll give you a Detra stick afterwards. All right, anyway, so we're going to go for get hit by another Shadow Ball there. It's going to do nothing. They're obviously trying to drop my special defense to no avail there. And I'm going to go for another struggle on Katana. Katana's nearly done like so many struggles and taken out. Like that, that type of fitness, it's, it's like, guys, it's like a solid five hit KO with struggle. All right, so go for another car mine there, boosting my special attack, getting my special defense up again. It doesn't really matter about my special defense too much because I'm already like insanely bulky. And uh, now I'm going to get my Katana taken out by the Moonblast. Basically, this whole team revolved around Ho-Oh, right? All the others were just sort of like the, the Kecleon was like the setup for it. All the other Pokemon were just like, sort of like to draw attention away from the Ho-Oh pretty much. All right, so swapping in my Arcanine again. It's not really going to do too much. It can go for a burn up. 
But that's, you know, that's pretty much all she wrote in this matchup. So it's going to go for a Shadow Ball against me again. I'd go for a Fire Spin. I thought Fire Spin would be better than the actual Overheat. I decided to go for that instead to keep the Gengar trapped in. I felt it would be nice to trap Gengar in because it's trapping me in. All right, so we're going to go for the uh, Calm Mind here, boosting my stats. Now, I'm up to, I think I'm up to about plus, uh, I think I'm plus five in Special Attack and Special Defense at the moment. Or very, very close around there. Almost, I think I'm more in mass in special defense. A special attack and one. Obviously, negative one in special defense. Okay, so I'm going to hit it by Nature's Madison. Now, Nature's Madison is actually a pretty good strategy around my ho -Oh. As you guys know, it does fixed damage. So I was like, mm, okay, that could be a little bit of a problem if I do get hit by that. Then I get critted by the Gengar. However, Finny's going to swap out. And I smell a rat here. I smell a big, big rat because... That Toxic is going to be coming my way from that Smiggle. Anyway, so we got Arcanine that's going to get bodied by the uh, Mega Giga, and that is going to go down. So you guys are probably thinking, oh, let's, you know, just use Toxic against the Ho-Ho. That's going to take out easy. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Your boy's got a little strategy, too, to get around that. Now, not only do I have a strategy to get around that, I've got an item on my Ho-Ho, which will help me out a little bit, too. So now we're going to go into Meowsic. Now, this is another key player uh, the base around my Ho-Ho set. We're going to go for the Pranks, the Safeguard. The Safeguard is going to safely block all status against my Ho-Ho. And now, now we've got the Shadow Ball, which is gonna actually going to fire off at my Meowsic. Meowsic actually tanks that. This is a very extremely bulky... Oh, guys, a very extremely bulky Meowsic. Max health, max special defense. Very, very bulky. Uh, now we're going to Giga Drain on the Smeagol. It's got a Focus Sash like I, you, like I knew it would. What, what other item would you really need to run on? And uh, or unless you ran Mantle Herb, that's probably about it. And uh, that Toxic is going to get blocked. That counter got absolutely... like That Smeagol got countered like, completely right. So now we've got the Tappy Finny coming in. So Tappy Finny is a bit of a problem right for that Smeagol because Smeagol won't be able to use its moves. Now, unfortunately for me, my Meowsic actually runs the following set. It's got rest. And unfortunately, it's going to fail because of the mist that just got sent out. I was feeling a little bit misty in the arena, people. Uh, we got rest, uh, recycle with Chesterberry, and toxic as the other move. So I could go for the rest, you know, wake myself up with the Chesterberry, recycle that Chesterberry, just keep spamming rest over and over again. I'm fairly bulky, and then I can just help out the Ho-Ho with the safe cup. Anyway, to no avail, the Gengar is going to take me out the Shadow Ball. So I got heavily countered there. The great thing is, though, I got that safeguard up. That was very, very important. So that's going to, like... I mean, there was already a Tappy Finny, but it definitely saved my Ho-Ho, right? All right, so finally, this freaking Mega Gengar goes down, which is absolutely awesome. And we've got a couple of Pokemon Rains. So Smeagol isn't really too much of a threat here. The only thing I've got to watch out with it if it uses Toxic against me. That's the only... Like, that's the only thing I'm worried about. All right, so the other Pokemon they got is Porygon 2. This is actually a very, very bulky team. And uh, these, th as I said, these sets were not playing games. These are, like, really decent sets in, like, EV spreads. So we've got an Ice Beam here. Now, the only thing I was worried about Ice Beam, other than getting critical hit, was getting frozen, right? Because, as you guys know, I'm no longer a Fire-type Pokemon. So, uh, Tapu Finny, right? I was thinking, okay, well, i got to get rid of that the Giga Drain, right? That's That needs to go. I don't want to have any, like... You know, I've only got Giga Drain. I don't want any, any accuracy drops up. Okay, so Smeagol's going to come out. I know that they can only send out Smeagol. It's going to go for a Spiky Shoot. I kind of guessed it would because I had it before. It really wants to stall out that uh, Surge, you know. It wants to get rid of that Surge, and then it wants to hit me with a Toxic. So I was like, okay, that's cool. It can hit me with a Toxic. I'm fine with that. Oh, you'll find out why, people. I'm fine with that. So we're going to go for another Carmine. That is my final Carmine. I've got plus six in uh, Special Attack there. We're good to go. All right, so we're no longer protected by the Safeguard. However... There's a mist on the field for one more turn. Can I dodge the Toxic? And can I take out the Porygon 2? you got to keep watching, people. All right, so we got the uh, Porygon 2 going for the Ice Beam there. I'm going to go for the Giga Drain. Giga Drain does solid damage. It's a solid, solid 2 hit KO. This Porygon keep, could, like, keep spam and recover, but in the end, I'm definitely going to be able to take it out. All right, so Smeagol finally gets a chance. It's going to land the Toxic against me. However, people, as you know, I always have an Ace in the hole, but even better to have a second Ace. I've got the Lumber as the item, so I thought... In case that I cannot, like, if I get poisoned, like, say if Meowstic fails to protect me with a safeguard, Kekagon fails to turn me into a steel type at the right time, I've got a Lumbery to allow me for one turn run. That makes a big, big difference. All right, so finishing off that Smiggle, they must be so salty, like, not knowing that I had a Lumbery, like, all the way to the end there. They, they play pretty well with a Smiggle. They play very well to try and poison me at the end there, and then they could probably try and stall me out with the uh, Recover Porygon 2 here. But pretty much it's quite hopeless for them because... I'm doing a lot of damage. They've only got, I've, like, I've got way more like healing capacity than them, uh, as in PP moves. And I'm ver hitting very, very hard too. They've only got a weak Ice Beam. Pretty much all they can do is freeze me. But that's it for the second game, people. I really hope you enjoyed this battle. If you haven't hit the like button, people, you now have a dang good reason to. 
And I uh, hope you learned something new. I really enjoyed doing this video too, um, especially because it's about like something really cool. Today, I don't have any bonus battle or like bloopers because I really didn't get a lot of great battles. These were the, definitely the two best battles I had. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you enjoy these uh, videos, if you're new to the channel, if you're old, make sure you hit that sub button, people, and uh, that like button. And I'll see you tomorrow for an upload. Peace.